Hey programmers, welcome back. Now that we learned about how to evaluate expressions in JavaScript, it's time for an exercise. So what you want to do is pause this video, go down to the link in the description and give this exercise a shot. This exercise will have you type some expressions and also predict how they evaluate, which is gonna be a very important skill as we learn how to program. So it looks like to start, I need to create myself a nice folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up VS Code. And what I need to do is create a folder where I'm gonna store all of my files, right? So I'll create that over here, expressions exercise. And it looks like I also wanna create some separate files that I'm gonna write my code into. So it looks like the first file I'm gonna be writing into is going to be string expressions.js. So just recall, if you wanna create a file, you can do is right click in your uh, side view in VS Code, hit new file, and just write the name of your file, being sure that it ends in a .js extension. So hopefully as you work through this exercise, you actually went ahead and typed out uh, each code snippet on your own. That way you get that muscle memory and actually practice you know, hitting these weird characters on your keyboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this code into my file. And what I'll notice is each of these lines is a console.log, which means when I run this file, they should print out some information. What I wanna do is predict what each of these lines will print out. So over here, it looks like I just have some string expressions with some concatenation, right? And so this should just combine these strings. So this one should just be river town, cat dog, New York. Notice that there's a space here. So that should be two words, New York, a uh, runner's knee with an exclamation point, and then man, bear, pig, all concatenated together. Notice that it is possible to do like multiple concatenations because I know how JavaScript evaluates, right? So looking at line five over here, when I have a multi-part expression, I do evaluate it in pieces, right? So technically this part of the expression would evaluate first into this, right, man, bear. And then finally, I would just concatenate man, bear, and pig together, giving me my final result. But here's what I'll do. Let me go ahead and run this code. So recall that to execute our file, we're gonna need to open up our terminal. And so if I open my terminal, what I'll need to do is make sure that my terminal is right next to where I have this file saved, right? So recall that I can do ls to list out uh, all of the folders and files that I can currently have access to. So it looks like my terminal is inside of my lecturing folder. Of course, you'll probably be in a different location based on where you saved uh, your folders and files. I'm gonna cd into my expressions exercise folder. I'll do cd and I'll type it in. And then from there, I should be able to look at all of the files and folders inside of that expressions exercise uh, folder. So here I'm right next to string expressions.js. And since it's a JS file, if I have node installed, I can execute this right by saying node string expressions.js. Let's see what we get. All right, and there we see our expected output for our string expressions. So let's keep it rolling and look at part two. Looks like I just have some math expressions over here. So here I have all of the code typed out. What I'll do is I'll just comment out some of my code and that way I can just focus on this chunks at a time. So let's go ahead and evaluate these expressions one by one. So line one, just a standard addition, right? That should just give us five, right? Nothing fancy there. The second one we do 10 minus 15, that should just give us negative five. Recall that negative numbers are just like any other values in JavaScript, nothing too fancy there. When I have a multi-part expression like line three, I evaluate in pieces, right? So I know that four plus one is gonna give me five, five minus five is gonna give me zero, right? So the total expression should evaluate to just a simple zero. And finally, I have some multiplication, four times three just equals 12, right? So nothing too fancy here. You should be able to expect all of these results. So let me run my code. So I'll do node and then number expressions.js. Be sure you have, you know, .js as your file extension. Otherwise you won't be able to run it. And here I see all of my results. So those look good to go. Let's work on the next chunk together. So here I just have a division to start. So seven divided by two, that will give me like a decimal number, right? Cause I know that seven is not perfectly divisible by two. So that's just a 3.5. Then here I have another multi-part expression and here I have to be very particular in the order that I evaluate this, right? So here I have an addition and also a multiplication. I know that those two operations actually have different order of operations, right? And so technically this part of the expression that is the multiplication would evaluate first, right? Kind of just like the rule in math. So that'll give me six and I just do four plus six, which of course is gonna be 10 over here, right? However, if I kind of forced my order of precedence by using parentheses, right, the grouping operator, I know that this over here would evaluate to six and then I do six times three, which would give me 18, right? So some very different results depending on whether or not we use some parentheses. Then in the final expression, we're using this percent, which is really the modulo operation, which recall gives us the remainder of the division, right? And so I'm gonna to try to divide five by two, but then really just give back the remainder. So if I do five divided by two, that gives me two remainder one. So that means the final answer is just one, right? Just giving back the remainder. So let's run this code. I should get 3.5, 10, 18, and one. 
We'll call it a nice shortcut we can use to just quickly get the last command we ran in our terminal. Right previously, I ran my node number expressions.js file. What I can do is just hit up on my arrow pad, and it'll give me like a history of all the commands I ran. So I'll go back to this one. I'll just hit enter, and there I see my expected results. So it looks like next up we have a few more modulo operations, just trying to get down these patterns, right? Modulo is going to be a really important operation that we'll use later on in the course. So here we do six mod two. So basically it's asking what is six divided by two, but just give back the remainder. I know the remainder is going to be zero here because six is perfectly divisible by two. In a similar way, looking at line 12, when I divide seven by two, I have a remainder of just one. When I do eight divided by two, I have a remainder of zero. And looking at the very last one over here, we do 19 mod 8. So how many times does 8 fit into 19? Well, that's about twice, right? With a remainder of 3, right? So that'll give me back a 3 over here. So just to really lay it out, when I do 19 divided by 8, that's going to give me 2 with a remainder of 3, right? How can I check my work? Well, if I do 8 times 2, that gives me 16. If I do plus 3, that gives me 19, which was my initial quantity, right? So let's run this code. Nice, and there we have our expected results. Looking at the last chunk over here, just some more modulo, so we'll just quickly go through this. So here we have 24 mod eight. We know that 24 is perfectly divisible by eight. It goes in exactly three times with a remainder of zero. So the modulo answer here is just zero, of course. How many times can four fit into seven? Well, it's just a once with a remainder of three, so that should be three. So looking at the third example over here, it looks like we have four mod seven. Now, I've noticed in my kind of experience of teaching people modulo, they find this one kind of hard to wrap their heads around, right? So again, modulo always gives you the remainder of the division, right? So when I divide four by seven, what is the remaining quantity? So I'll just ask myself, right? How many times can seven fit into four? Well, that's zero times. So what's the remainder? Well, the remainder must be the entire four. So the answer over here is just four, right? How can I check my work? Well, if I do seven times zero plus four, that gives me my initial quantity of four. Looking at the fourth expression here, we have a multi-parter and we know we should evaluate the parentheses first. So I know that 10 mod five will give me zero because 10 is already perfectly divisible uh, by five with no remainder. So we just do five plus zero, which just gives us five, of course. So then at the bottom, we have really the same expression with just the parentheses around the addition. So that'll give us 15 inside these parentheses. 15 mod five will just give us zero. So if I run this code, I should get zero, three, four, five, zero. Nice, and there we have it. So moving on to part three, looks like we have some nice Boolean expressions uh, to step through. Recall that a Boolean is just really like the simplest data type where you only have two possible values, right? Either true or false. So I'll go ahead and create my separate file, a Boolean expressions.js, and I'll write all of my code inside. All right, so let's evaluate this code in pieces and I'll just look at the first four, let's say. So obviously this first one will just give us false. Notice that um, just writing false, like literally, is a valid value in JavaScript. So this is not a string because it's not in quotation marks, right? And we know when we use the exclamation point or like the not operation for a Boolean, it will just take the reverse value, right? So not true is still false, right? In a similar way, not false is going to be true. And then not not true is going to be true, right? Because I kind of flip it back and forth, right? So stepping through this fourth one, uh, step by step, we know that this highlighted expression that is just a not true will give us false. And then not false finally evaluates to true, right? So again, we can always evaluate these expressions uh, one by one. So let's try that. I should get false, false, true, true. So let's evaluate this. I should get false, false, true, true. So I'll be sure to run this new file. Nice. Looking at the next expression, we just have some review of the and operation. Recall that to represent the and operation, we use double ampersands, right? And in general, and will evaluate to true only when both sides of the expression are true, right? So this one's going to be false. This one is going to be false. This one's also going to be false. And the only time you could possibly get back true is when both things are true. So I'll run that, give it a look. Nice, there we have it. And then similarly in the next chunk, we have just some or operations, right? I think of or as saying like either or. So basically or will return true when at least one of your sides is true. And that also means when both sides are true, it will still return true. And so that means that all of these are going to return true except the scenario where both things are false, right? So this one's only false and the rest will definitely be true. So let's give this a run. Nice, now that we have those basic operations for Booleans down pat, let's take a look at what happens when we combine operations together, right? So I got the first one here. I see like an or, but also we applied a not to the left-hand side. And then we just have to evaluate this in chunks, right? So not false gives me true. Then I'm saying true or false, which I know overall evaluates to a true, right? So the total expression should be a true. 
looking at the next chunk, I have another multi-part expression. We have some parentheses, right? So I know for sure I should evaluate this chunk first. True and true gives me true. And then when we do false or true, that total expression evaluates to true. So this second one should also be true. Looking at the third one over here, we have basically the same expression. We know that this highlighted bit gives me true. Then we say not true, which is false. We say false or false overall, which evaluates to a false, right? So looking at the very last expression, I must evaluate the parentheses first. So I have false or true in my highlighted portion. That will evaluate to true. And then if I look at the left-hand side, it says not true, which can evaluate a little more to be a false. And then finally, we're saying false and true, which overall evaluates to false, right? So for these last four, I should get true, true, false, false. Nice. So looking at part four, it looks like we have some nice comparison expressions, recalling that comparisons evaluate to Booleans, right? But I can arrive at those Booleans using other data types like numbers or strings, right? Let's go ahead and write this code into our comparisons.js file. And we'll evaluate these step by step. So the first few are nothing fancy, really just utilizing equality and the not equality uh, operations, right? So here we're checking, is true equal to false? That's definitely a overall false statement, right? Because true is different from false. Is false equal to false? That's a true statement. Don't be fooled by an expression like this, right? What we're asking is, is the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side? And that's most definitely a true statement in the second scenario, right? And then the third one we're checking, is false not equal to true? That's actually another true statement, right? because those two things are different, and that's what this not equals operation is asking, right? Is the left-hand side different from the right-hand side? So that's a true statement. And finally, we have this fourth one over here, where we actually apply a not to the left-hand side first. So not true evaluates to false. We check false equal to false, which overall is a true statement, right? So I should get false and three trues for this first bit. So be sure to run comparison. So node comparisons.js. Nice, that was a little bit of a warm up for these comparisons. Let's move on to this other chunk. So here we have a multi-parter. We know that two plus three is gonna be five. Five equal to five, that's most definitely a true, right? Then we're asking, is four strictly less than zero? That's a false statement. Here we're asking, is 10 greater than or equal to 10? That's a true statement, right? Because remember, we're checking greater than or equal to, so the equal to part is satisfied. And then this last bit, we're checking if 10.3 is greater than or equal to 10, which is a true statement, right? Because this satisfies the greater than aspect of that comparison. So let's give that a go, be super sure. So true, false, true, true, nice. Let's get on to the next chunk over here. So here we check if 10 divided by two is equal to 50. That of course is a true statement because we know that the left-hand side does indeed evaluate to 50. Looking at the second one over here, we check, basically they're asking, is the remainder when I divide 100 by two, is it zero? That's actually a true statement because we know that 100 is perfectly divisible uh, by two. In other words, 100 is an even number, right? In a similar way, here we check if 11 mod two uh, equals zero, that will actually be false. And how do I know? Well, 11 mod two, what's the remainder when I divide 11 by two? That's gonna be one. Is one equal to zero? That's false, right? Looking at the last expression over here, we're getting a little tricky, right? Here we're checking if 7.0 is equal to seven. Those are actually like the same like quantity. And so that would evaluate to true over here, even though one of them has a decimal point and the other does not, right? We know they're equivalent values. We'll run that and there we have it. So looking at this last chunk, it looks like the first one says 13 mod five greater than zero. We know that we should evaluate this left-hand side first. So what is 13 mod five? Well, that's just gonna be three, right? And three is greater than zero. So that ought to be a true. We have some comparison expressions. We check some strings, right? Is potato equal to potato? Definitely a true statement. Is tomato with a capital T equal to lowercase tomato? That is false, right? When you check for equality, uh, it does matter that we have the same characters. So that includes the same capitalization uh, of these characters. So looking at the fourth one over here, we're checking if the string 42 is equal to the number 42. Recall what we mentioned about triple equals uh, in our lecture. It checks for like strict equality, which means it'll only return true when both sides have the same value and are of like the same type, right? So this one will return false, but let's just actually run that right now. It's kind of an important uh, difference, right? So I get false over here, but if I had done something like loose equality, which is the double equals, that would have a return true, right? And like I said, during the lecture, most often than not, you're gonna to want to use the triple equality, right? Finally, looking at the last one over here, we just have another multi-part expression. Is five greater than three and is one equal to zero? So I know that left-hand side evaluates to true, but the right-hand side evaluates to false. 
Now here we're asking true and false, which is an overall false statement, right? So let's run all of these and see what we get. We should get true, true, false, false, false. Awesome, and there we have it. All right, programmers, that's all I got for this walkthrough on this expressions exercise. What I definitely want you to do before you hop to the next video in this series is make sure you can actually solve and predict all of these expressions on your own, right? It's really important that you get comfortable first with reading and predicting code before we actually write a ton of code on our own, right? So repeat this exercise if you have to, right? Use the walkthrough if you need to. And then when you're feeling ready and confident, then move on to the next one, right? Because we're going to learn some new material.